Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Friday, the 21st of January, 2022. It is Friday of the second week of the year, the second week of ordinary time, uh, but it is also, more importantly, the memorial of St. Agnes the Martyr. Um, St. Agnes of... Uh, fourth century, yeah, 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 300s. Uh, the fourth, uh, fourth century martyr, she was born in the second cent in, in the third century, the 200s. Uh, but she was martyred about 304, I think they say. Um, and she was martyred as a young girl. Uh, her name is listed in the canon in Eucharistic Prayer 1. Whenever we pray Eucharistic Prayer 1 at Mass, there's a whole list of saints that are there, and Agnes's name is, is there. So she has um, uh, great, there, there was great devotion, or, 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 or there was great um, uh, remembrance of her um, in, in, in the city of Rome. Um, and so this is what happens. Um, uh, but Agnes uh, herself, again, 12 or 13 when she was martyred, um, had many suitors. Again, people got married really early in ancient times. you got to remember that. It's not just like a 12 or 13 year old we know today. Uh, but uh, she had many suitors and she rebuffed them all because she wanted to be dedicated to purity and chastity. And so they turned her name into the Roman prefect uh, to be, um, as, as a Christian, uh, to be persecuted. And she was a member of Roman nobility. Somehow her family could not help her or her family was not Christian and they basically disowned her. It's all bunch of things and all kinds of legends. It is remarkable that she is one of the people perhaps who did historically exist. Um, and so not that many of the other things didn't, but there's a lot less information on them that makes some of the things suspicious. But Agnes seems to have had a, a better historical record than some of the others. Um, and so she goes through many torments and many pains and many uh, uh, troubles. Uh, and unfortunately, she is eventually martyred as a young girl. Um, again, her witness is not just to religious purity and virginity, but it is the fact that even at a young age, someone can understand the faith so much uh, to be able to remain firm in it, even in the midst of, 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 of terror and difficulties um, and, and sadness and tragedies, um, uh, which is which is remarkable, and uh, which is, again, why she's a saint. Uh, it is also on this day that two lambs are presented to Pope Francis, uh, which he will bless, um, and their wool, I think in the summertime, is then shorn from them, it's shaved from them, and it's turned into this thing called the pallium, which is like a scarf. Like this, uh, which goes over the heads um, and then drapes on the front and the back uh, of, of archbishops when they are named. It's a special little thing they get, um, kind of a, a union and a link uh, to the to, to the Pope in a special way. Um, and so. Uh, the Pope wears one too. Uh, so the lambs are done today because uh, Agnes means lamb in Latin. And so little lambs are brought to be blessed and their and the, and their wool shorn in the summertime can be made into these little scarves. Um, uh, in today's, oh, I'm coming, coming to you from the parking lot. Uh, as you can see, there's a whole lot of nothing going on. Uh, so many dire predictions and forecasts uh, last night and it, it rained and it froze rain and whatever it was. Uh, but we did not get thousands of feet of snow. We are supposed to still get thousands of feet of snow, but we'll see what happens because North Carolina weather predictions are notoriously inaccurate uh, and so um, again but uh, we've closed we're done there's no mass there's nothing today so that's why uh, a little reflection uh, hopefully to fill in the gap uh, so in the readings today first reading again still from the book of Samuel um, remember the, rec uh, the reconciliation that Jonathan helps to do yesterday between Saul and David well that comes to nothing uh, all of a sudden and and again there's a lot of chapters we don't hear from but in this chapter there are many people who do not like David in Saul's court and they have twisted Saul's mind to think that David it's going to usurp him and overthrow him and whatever, whatever. And so uh, David gathers an army to himself to escape from Saul's anger. And Saul makes an army. Saul takes the, is, is, uh, the, the Israel army and goes to pursue David so that uh, he can, you know, defeat him and kill him because David wants to kill him. Well, God delivers Saul into David's hands. And where David could have easily, because Saul's asleep and, the, and everyone seems to be asleep in the camp and their opposing camps and what have you, uh, he could have killed Saul. He doesn't. He cuts off a part of his cloak. David regrets doing that because it's toying with Saul. And and, you know, he calls uh, forth to Saul and says, you know, I could have killed you, but I didn't. I cut off your cloak. Can you see that? Why are we doing this? Why are we fighting? I do not want to hurt you. you know, people are telling you I want to hurt you, but I don't. Believe me, do not believe them. Um, and through all this, uh, all this honest uh, talk between David and Saul, Saul recognizes the fact that he's been misled. Um, and he, you know, welcomes David back in and says that David rightfully should be king because he is much more noble and, and much more, um, uh, has much more wisdom than Saul ever could have. Uh, we'll see tomorrow where Saul and David now join forces to defeat and the Amalekites, again, these Amalekites are everywhere, always trying to overthrow Israel. Um, and in a heat of battle, both Saul and Jonathan will die. That's, that's tomorrow reading and that's how David is the, the way is paid for David to become king um, the the thing about it is that again there's not a promise and we'll see that David also messes up uh, again the whole question about what it is that God again wants for Israel and what is it that Israel wants for itself and those are probably two different things and rather than listening to God Israel listens only to itself which kind of makes you know life more difficult
Same thing with us. Sometimes we don't want to listen to God. We only want to listen to ourselves, thinking that that's what God wants, and it may not be, or it may be far, far, far from the case. In the Gospel today, um, Mark goes on to just uh, uh, account the fact that Jesus uh, picked 12 uh, men, uh, again, men, not, not women, but we don't know, they could have been women, but they just were men, but we don't know, uh, but 12 men, and they become the 12, the apostles, and again, the, their chief job is going to be going out to preach and being going out to um, cast out demons, uh, because that's all that Mark's Gospel wants to be about, is casting out demons. Again, you pick up a stone, look under it, and there's a demon, they're everywhere, but uh, that's, why, that's why Jesus does these kinds of things. Again, it's more so the understanding to to um, right the wrongs of this world and to bring back balance and order into this world. And these 12 individuals, um, many of whom are just a name, uh, some who are connected to fathers, um, again, James and John, the, th the sons of thunder, um, you get uh, Judas, Judas uh, Iscariot, who is labeled as the traitor. Uh, but all of them are just names. Um, there's nothing more that is really said about them, about their character. Um, again, their connections to family and what Judas would have done is about it. Um, again, the fact of the matter that they are individual, or ordinary people, ordinary men um, who are chosen, you know, for great things. Uh, what this is supposed to tell us is that anyone can do great things in this world um, if, if, if they dare to listen to what it is that God is asking them to do and respond with all their hearts to what it is that God asks them to do. Um, it is in the ordinariness that God creates extraordinary. It is in the run of the mill and the everyday that God, does, that God reveals glory and wonder and beauty. It is in all these things that are sometimes overlooked and uncared for that God shows how much God is at work in this world, uh, bringing it to uh, a, a greater understanding of itself and revealing all of those things of, of goodness and, and holiness that sometimes we might overlook and might not think about. In our own ordinariness, as we go through this world, may we always try uh, to experience that which is extraordinary in listening to what it is that God has to say to us. And may the Lord give you his peace.